So as always, first and foremost, let us give all praises and great, great honor and glory to our Elohim. Hallelujah. And to his holy begotten son, Yahushua Hamashiach, the soon to come king, to the spirit of truth, the Ruach HaKadosh, and of course, as always, to our family scattered to the four corners of the earth, I just want to say shalom, shalom, shalom. So brothers and sisters, my ox and my Cody's, before we uh, get into today's lesson, I just want to say, I don't know where I'm going to go with it today. As you can see from the title, we'll be discussing blaspheming the Holy Spirit in depth. So because the topic is on the Ruach HaKadosh, we're just going to let the Ruach HaKadosh lead. Okay. So before we get into the lesson, let us get into our prayer postures, and we're going to say a quick word. Holy Abba Yah, we come before you today, giving you all praise and great, great, great glory and honor, because you are worthy. You are deserving, Father. Father, we just ask that you open the hearts and the minds of the believers and the listeners today, that Today's word will be nourishing to their mind, body, hearts, spirit, and that they will be able to bless those who they come in contact with just because they they heard the word today, Father Yah. So with that, we just want to say hallelujah and thank you for everything you keep doing for us and for the great awakening in your holy son's mighty name we pray. So. Brothers and sisters, let's get into today's message. Now, we don't want to make it too long, okay? We just want to, um, we want to touch on a few points. Because, of course, we have been talking about blaspheming the Holy Spirit time and time and time and time again. But it seems that there is a misunderstanding especially amongst those who you would think would know better, but they don't seem to stress the importance of this particular topic. And because uh, I love my brothers and sisters, and I want y'all to do well, and I want y'all to ascend and always vibrate higher, we're going to go over this, okay? So turn with me in your Bibles to... Of course, we're going to talk about the scripture on blaspheme in the spirit. Matthew 12, and we're going to do Mark 3 because Mark 3 goes a little bit more in depth. But we're going to go to Matthew 12, verses 31 to 32 first. And this is the, the King James Version. And who am I kidding, y'all? I really need to quit playing and get me the Cephar, okay? But, hey, I've been blessed as well otherwise. Um, but I'm going to get it sooner or later. Now, uh, let's read verses 31 to 32. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Ruach HaKadosh, it says Holy Ghost right here. But the Ruach HaKadosh shall not be forgiven unto men. Now, let me say this again for emphasis. But the blasphemy against the Ruach HaKadosh shall not be forgiven unto men. Y'all hear me? I don't know. Y'all y'all hear me? Okay. Not forgiven. <clears throat> so, for all of the, you know, two-thirds is a false doctrine. If you can, you got two eyes to see, and you see people out there openly disregarding and blaspheming the Holy Spirit and you still want to hold on to that truth that the two-third is a false doctrine, I don't know why you teach it. Okay. All right. Let, let's go again. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Ruach HaKadosh, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, not in Satan's kingdom, neither in the world to come. Y'all get that? 
it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come so it's just not happening so this is why we say things like if you don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're teaching and you're just regurgitating you might want to hold your tongue because there are certain things that you must know and have understanding be before you carry it out let's go to mark 3 and um uh, Give me a little second, y'all. This is one of the reasons I have not been posting as often. Because this laptop. Okay. I don't know why all our laptops are super slow. But they don't like the word. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So let us go to... You know what? Let us start with verse 21 and read from there. This is Mark... And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, or Beelzebub, <laughs> and by the prince of the devils casted he out devils. And he called on to him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but had an end. No matter, no man, sorry, can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Ruach HaKodesh hath never forgiveness. Let's say that again. We, you know, emphasis is good, y'all. Emphasis is good. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKodesh hath never forgiveness. But, big, big but, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Keep that in mind, eternal doesn't end, right? Eternal damnation. Because they said he had an unclean spirit. So the scribes pretty much called Hamashiach the Messiah. Beelzebub and said that he was casting out by the prince of devils he casted out devils so they right there blaspheme they call his holy works unholy like the scripture says here because they they said he had an unclean spirit so they saw Hamashiach's works he was casting out devils he was healing the sick. He was doing all these great things. And they opened their mouth because they, this is what happens when jealousy or, you know, certain things you don't have understanding to speak on, you speak on. And you say it amiss because you, <laughs> some of y'all think this is a comedy show. You And in truth, and in fact, you should probably leave the comedy for the, the comedy shows and stick to the scriptures. Because if you see someone speaking in or praying in the spirit and you decide you want to mock it that right there is also blasphemy because it's disrespect let's look at the according to google what does blaspheming mean or blasphemy the act of offense of speaking sacrilegiously about god or sacred things or profane talk now let's look at some of the synonyms Profanity, profaneness, sacrilege, irreligiousness, irreverence, taking the Lord's name in vain, swearing, curse, cursing, impiety or impiety, impiousness, ungodliness, unholiness, desecration. Hey, here's one we know. Disrespect. Disrespect. Now, how many of y'all have seen people disrespect 
the Holy Spirit and his works. Hmm? There are many ways that you can disrespect the Holy Spirit. For example, I see some people, like, as I didn't know that people were saying Joseph was the daddy, though scripture states that the angel came to Mary and told her that she would have a son of the Most High. And that the Holy Spirit will come upon. You know what? Let's just go to the scripture. Let's just go to. Let's see. Luke 1. There we go. Okay. Let's go to Luke 1, verses 30. We're going to start from there. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with Elohim and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahushua he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and Elohim of Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever now stick a pin right there because we can give another example of blasphemy. But this is blaspheming the Hamashiach. Now go hard for that. Some of y'all might be wondering, why, what are you bibbling and babbling about? He was never conquered. If you understand when the Most High or the Scripture says, worship him in spirit and in truth, and that his son came in truth and in grace, or you understand what truth means, because unfortunately, those who have agreed to bring hell on earth has caused this um, confusion of truth and lies. M having some of our people think that, hey, it's okay to tell a little lie, or not even just a little lie, but confuse the truth, basically. Like the Most High says, he doesn't change. Neither does the truth. There's no deviations. There's no omissions. There's no subtractions or additions. Truth is truth. It is what it is. It is constant as it is. Now, the only way that we have, especially, we talked about the four horns scattering the people, the Portugal, um, the Spaniards, the, man, how? <laughs> France and England, right? So I know some of y'all want to come with Germany and Italy. They came at a different time, but these are the, the ones we want to focus on. They scattered the most highest people initially. So you can tell by the region which they colonized or territory that they colonized who was who and who colonized what, okay? Or for the most part, who took over. So you'll have, you got black people with French last names. They ain't never been to France. Spanish, black people with Spanish last names, and they've never been to Spain. And, uh, you know, the Portugal, Brazil, same thing. And so we talked about them putting their names. This, this in itself, how they claim the planet for themselves and the earth for themselves, when it's the most high, it belongs to him. Claiming what belongs to him for yourself. The Holy Most High, you know you can't create none of this. How could this belong to you? Blasphemy. Replacing his holy son with the image of a heathen. Like here he talks about he, uh, let's go. He shall reign over the house of Jacob. So you know he came out of the tribe of Judah, which came from Jacob, one of Jacob's sons. So he didn't come from Japheth. He didn't come from Esau. He didn't come from heathens. So it's like replacing the holy Hamashiach with unholiness. That's why we call it blasphemy, right? But he said, the scripture says that all blasphemies, you it can be forgiven. But never the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Because, okay, we saw where Moses didn't sanctify the Most High. And you know the Most High loved him some Moses and Aaron. And they didn't make it into the promised land that they were supposed to lead the people to because they didn't sanctify the Most High. But didn't stop the Most High from 
you know, he raised Moses up. He came on the Mount of Transfiguration, right? Um, and that was one of the examples that I was trying to give, but just, just give me a little second. I'll get there, right? But you can be forgiven. The same thing with the Son of Man, Hamashiach. But the Holy Spirit, he is the last, right? Trying to help us out of a sticky situation in these last days. And you blaspheme him, you're truly ungrateful. It's like you've been ungrateful to the Most High. You've been ungrateful to the Messiah. Here we are. And then you want to be ungrateful to the Holy Spirit and you're just not going to make it. That's a done deal, right? So if you know people who are claiming that um, Joseph is the daddy, though the scripture says, that and verse 35 and the angel answered oh well she said wait let's go back to 34 then said mary unto the angel how shall this be seeing i know not a man so she says she didn't consummate the relationship so she's a virgin she's never known a man uh so the angel answered and said to her the ruach hakadesh it says holy ghost here shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of Elohim. But I'm trying to figure out how people preaching about the most high. Like, who are you preaching about? If you can't even, if you don't even believe in the Ruach HaKadosh, how do you believe in the most high? He's a spirit, right? <laughs> so you completely blaspheme him. And say, you know, that's impossible. Joseph had to be the daddy. Because right now it just looks like man worship. Right? Because they're trying to say, nah, the female, mm -mm. No, 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 no. They're trying to include themselves. And in that, foolishly took themselves out of the book of life. Because the scripture's not going to lie to you. But they're probably going to overlook that as well. The part that says that. Because... You don't disrespect the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the one, as the scripture says, come upon Mary and causes her to have the powerful Hamashiach housed in her holy womb. And you going to say Joseph did that? Like, what? <laughs> You're gone. I'm just, did, the scripture already spoke. So right now, if you don't understand what you're doing, I might have to think that it's misery loves company. You already know that you blaspheme the Holy Spirit and you just want to take some people with you. Some of our unknowing, newly woken people with you. Because <laughs> there's some wicked people in this earth. There's wicked people amongst Israel and wicked people in the world. And there are wicked people that have done wicked things. And no, hey, look, they not going to come from it. They're going to take a few with them. So this is why I wanted to get back here. Because I'm like, most high, it doesn't seem as if some of our people truly understand the wickedness that they do. Or they allow other people to get in their ear so that they could do. You have people claiming that they're the Holy Spirit. You have people claiming that they give the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's so much wrong. Even if they do speak some truth. Right? It's it's like how like, we always got to go back to the Garden of Eden. Right? We talked about the serpent. He came and told truth. He did. But he also mixed in the lies by omitting the truth. The real truth. This is how we talk about truth is truth, right? If you, any omission, it, it now becomes watered down. It's a lie. It's not as effective. So when the snake was trying to tell them they'd be like gods, they were already like God. Like in, uh, I can't remember what verse it was in the Apocrypha. I'll come back to you all on that. But the scripture talks about the most high intended for man to be immortal and have eternity like he is. Or be eternal like he is. But they listened to the wrong voice and lost it. Instead, they welcomed in death. 
and that was their portion because what the wages of sin is death so death came in because they keep listening to the wrong influences and not reading the scripture for yourself for example i was listening to some uh well there were some people who they had some good stuff you know they were preaching a word and it it was powerful until i noticed that one of them seemed to have a problem with when people said wood and stone. For example, the scripture, the most I said that his people would be taken to foreign land and they would worship wood and stone. Now, I don't know what was going on with this, this person, but it seems as if something wasn't quite right. Because if you look at the Messiah in like the Roman Catholic Church, they're made out of marble. What is marble? Stone, right? And they put him on a cross. That's wood. And you see people kissing his feet. Right? That's what they're doing. Worshipping him. So when a person says that, oh, Jacob worshipped a stone too. And you got to go in the scriptures and see. Because he was talking about the dream Jacob had about the ladder. And the angels ascending and descending out of heaven. And then the Most High blessed him. Gave him that land and his descendants that land. And... Jacob used the stone as a pillar, which is for remembrance, and he called it Bethel. That is not worshiping the stone. So there's a lot of definition issues that some people are teaching you, but they probably shouldn't be teaching because they're leading you astray. So the person was getting all mad about wood and stone, but it's like you need some more understanding. Jacob was not worshiping the stone. It was as a remembrance when he anointed it and called the place Bethel. Right? They had altars they made out of stone, all those kinds of things. But there's a difference between worshiping it and ha having it as a memorial. So it's like the teachers you heap on, you've got to go look in the scriptures yourself and see what are they talking about. Because I'm like, I'm there like reading, I'm like, where does it say Jacob worshipped the stone <laughs> that he was laying his head on? So, you know, I don't know what was going on. So, hey, unsubscribe. <laughs> okay, that right there. Nah, you knew certain things, but that ticked you off. I didn't say that. The most I said it, <laughs> according to the scriptures, that was what his people's going to do, because that's what the heathens do. Taken by idols. The Gentiles did that. Taken away by idols. That's what they worship. This is why some of them can't get it through their heads when you say, if it's not according to the word of the Most High, I'm not teaching of my own word, but that of the Most High, who said that he took his people, you know, scattered them. Like the book of Nehemiah. What, wait one second. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 8 says, Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though though there were of you cast, though there were of you cast onto the uttermost part of the heaven, Yet I will gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy power, or sorry, and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by the great power and by the strong hand. Mm hmm. Scattered them abroad. But I, you know, this is why the most I told his people don't worship wood and stone, those dead things. Because after a while, it affects your mind and your heart. Your heart comes like stone. Because he says, what? You become a servant to what you worship. And your brain becomes nearly brain dead. Shuts you down. You start to walk in the valley of the shadow of death or live it or become a part of it. That's why he's trying to warn you. You know, but we got a lot of stiff necked people. Some of y'all don't want to read the scriptures. You just want to know somebody has enough. Somebody reads it for you. And guess what? There are people out there that don't mean you any good. They hope you don't look and read for yourself so that they can lead you 
down a very sticky path. Some of y'all like to heap profits onto you. Oh, they just got to put profits in front of their name. And you're good. And I know maybe you don't want to hear this right now because you feel like, oh, we're getting together. But as we talk about truth in this day and age, people don't completely understand it. They don't understand what truth means. So when you say things like, I didn't give the Messiah his name, the Romans, the Greek, Israelites, a man did not give the Messiah his name. The son of the highest got his name from the most highest. The angel said this is what his name would be. The scriptures give you an idea, if you go deeper, that it wouldn't be Jesus Christ. But we've gone there. And I'll, I'll go there again because, of course, I have, uh, you know, another message. Right? The shallow will just stay surface because that's where we're at. Right now, I'm not even like, you know, we talk about swirling. We talk about those sins. But, you know, some of our people are not going to go that much further. They're just, some are stuck at the shallow level. And I know it's a noble thought for some of you who are like, yeah, you know, two-thirds is a myth. All of the people are going to wake up, but no. If you got a massive amount of people being led by people, some who think they're the Holy Spirit, some who deny the Holy Spirit, some who would see you praying in the spirit and mock the Holy Spirit. <laughs> like, listen, lack of knowledge is taking our people down. Like, faster than the beast, you're taking your own self out. Right? I mean, the beast is doing it too. They're doing an excellent job. You know, we see all of these mis uh, mistreatments and injustices and these things going on. And I know some of y'all get hot and irate, but watch your mouth. Some of y'all quick to jump and talk about, oh, where's God? And um, if this doesn't apply to you, please don't subscribe. <laughs> but I'm talking to those because I see it. Quick to jump and throw the most high out there. You don't seem to realize the reason these things happen is not because of him. He already put the mandate out there for you. It is your stiff-necked brothers and sisters in bloodline that is causing this. The ones who think because you speak against their sin in order to save them or to help them that, oh, they're just going to continue mocking, but not knowing that they, they're going to reap what they sow. Unfortunately, we're going to reap it with them because collectively we're going to get punished or we're getting that punishment. But I can't feel sorry. I feel nothing anymore. If you hear this word and you continue in your sin, hey, you think you're hurting me, you're hurting yourself. You think you're laughing at me, you're the joke. I'm only saying what the most high puts in my word. If y'all watch my other videos, I already said, hey, I pray for my enemies to be destroyed. If you join allegiance with the enemy, that's what you are. You're sinking sand. And this might sound harsh, but this is tough love, baby. This, everything we go through, Deuteronomy 28, tough love. You think the Most High trying to save his enemies? I mean, seriously, that's a real question. Do you think he's trying to save his enemies? Because if you think that, you are in for a rude awakening. That's why he gave us the law. That's why he gave us the scriptures. That's why he gives you prophets. That's why he gives you true prophets from his spirit, his Holy Spirit, who is the one who divvies out the gifts. Some of y'all talk about mother wisdom. Some of y'all talk about prophecy. True prophecy, true wisdom comes from him and from the Ruach HaKadosh. Okay, we're going to go into 1 Corinthians 12 in a second. But those people who say things like they make prophets, Blaspheme in the spirit. You taking away the attributes of the Holy Spirit and giving it to yourself. Bye. You might not understand what I'm saying, but don't don't worry. You will. You just wrote yourself out of the book of life. Okay. You just wrote yourself out of the book of life. We try to tell you hold your tongue. The scripture clearly doesn't put Joseph as the father, and clearly doesn't show that you gave prophecy or gift of wisdom, or gift of teaching to anyone. 1 Corinthians 12, read it, baby. 
Yeah. Read it. Read it. Only the Most High, through His Spirit of Truth, gives those gifts. No, don't get it twisted. There are fake prophets. As you see with Jezebel and Elijah, there were prophets of Baal. Elijah mocked them, said, hey, you know, maybe a little louder with their shenanigans. Maybe your gods can't hear you. It was the same thing in Egypt. When the people were moaning and groaning, who answered? Was it Baal? Was it Rimfan? Was it Moloch? Was it Satan? Who answered? So the Most High answered, but a lot of you keep giving praise to Satan and his kingdom and wonder why your whole life going to hell. You blaspheme the Most High for his works. That's why he keeps telling you. He's the one who took you out of Egypt. He took your ancestors out of Egypt and they kept doing mischief. So guess what? You reap what you sow. There you go. That's the, those are, that's the beast for you. They're mirroring all your bad behavior. The mischief, just like with the leopard's body, right? He said they're quick to mischief. So everything that your brothers and sisters or our brothers and sisters do, mischief, sin, comes back on us. So all of y'all who like to say, hey, I'm not going to tell anybody what to do and it doesn't affect you, it does affect you. But I guess as long as you, you know, you're chasing the bag and you got some more, uh, what is it, <laughs> content for your uh, videos or whatever, it's all good, right? Who cares? That's a spiritual death. You have no understanding. None. This is why you need the Ruach HaKadosh to wake you up. And some of y'all blaspheme in the Ruach HaKadosh, but claim you saints. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you this power. So if you disrespect him, how do you expect for him to come upon you and give you power? You claim that he don't exist. You want to put man worship upon this and flesh and blood in his place so basically you already wrote yourself out i see some of y'all you let certain certain types of people lead you and teach you knowing that they don't even make it in the congregation according to the laws anyway but hey you know you want to be happy go lucky hey you gonna have at it so We see verse 37 from the same chapter says, For with Elohim nothing shall be impossible. Don't put limitations on him. Right? He's the one that shows up and shows out. He's the one that puts your enemies under your feet. Right? You become an enemy. We talked about Revelation that all those things you saw happening were happening to the enemies of our Elohim. Some of y'all jumping and saying, yeah, yeah, that's your enemies. But if you're an enemy to him, you getting it too. It might as well save your anger, save your frustration. If you're not willing to obey, if you're not willing to hear and get you some understanding to see that what he intended was not bad. What he intended was to save your life. But as long as you continue to sow wickedness, you will reap wickedness. And as long as you continue this, and those that you don't want to hold accountable and say what they do don't affect you, listen, the beast is going to be around. You can sit down and talk about they dying out to your blue in the face. <laughs> right? But as long as we have people who are still committing these wicked offenses, they're going to stay around to continue the wickedness that you do. You continue to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Oh, my goodness. I'm not even going to say continue. You, If you've done it already, that's, that's a wrap. 
That's a wrap. And it's not me saying it. Read the scripture because some of y'all want somebody to be angry at. You want somebody to be mad at. But lack of knowledge does not pay at all. It doesn't. So let's go 1 Corinthians 12. And I'm going to have to do a part two to this because it's a lot. But we've got to emphasize this madness right if you don't know what blaspheming means it's replacing holiness with unholiness calling the holy unholy or filthy or unclean but you have to have discernment to know the difference especially in this day and age all right so uh, next time we're gonna we're going to pick up back and, uh, you know, we can read the book of Baruch again, but real quick. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away onto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of Elohim calleth Hamashiach accursed. And that no man can say that Hamashiach is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Now these, or there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities or differences of administration, sorry, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For the one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Hamashiach. So it's telling you, for the body is one. The body is talking about is the bride. Right, have many members, so you got many different tasks, many different talents, many different gifts, and all of this, all of them work together for one cause. Right, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, Ruach Hakadosh. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to think into one into one spirit, for the body is not one member but many. So it's saying that you're baptized in the Ruach, right? Whether you know who you are or you don't. No. Whether you be bond or free, there's one spirit. That's why it's important to test the spirit, to discern the spirit. What spirit are you discerning or testing for? The Ruach HaKadosh, right? Because your spirit testifies. Of the, you know, spirit to spirit. Is this the Holy Spirit? Or is this another spirit? Because there are many other spirits out there. Counterfeits. All of these uh, other spirits pretending, operating in people to cause confusion. Like we said, you had prophecy. What type of prophet are you? Are you prophet of the world or a prophet of Elohim? What are you prophesying? Are you prophesying about Disney World and about Hollywood? Are you prophesying of the mysteries of our Elohim from his mind? Are you his mouthpiece or are you the, the mouthpiece of Baal? Okay, were you baptized with the Ruach HaKadosh? Right, because we know what that's how he comes, by baptism. Comes upon you. So were you baptized and did you receive of him? Or you just regurgitate and taking a little here from a channel and a little there from somebody else and a little and a little and putting it together and making up your own conclusions. 
Where are you getting your teaching from? Because this is how you get deeper understanding. Understanding others might not have. That might boggle some minds. Like, where do you get this from? It takes you to another level. Outside of this world, okay? While this world might contain you, with the Ruach HaKadosh, is like taking you to different levels. That's why he gave you the spirit of truth. So some people could be operating on their own heart and they heard things from other places. Like I told y'all about the prophet that was on YouTube. There's a prophet here. I think he dropped off a prophet now. And he said he didn't know that he had to do works. Revelation 22, for all of y'all who don't think that you need to do works, right? That is why there is the book of life. It documents your works. Okay, so whether you get written into it or written out of it, that's where it is. For all of y'all who keep going back to the thief on the cross, right? That's your record. Okay? And Revelation 22 was...